Now that we've studied derivatives, we can start applying them to different things about functions. And one of the ways is to just tell the behavior of the function. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to tell where a function is increasing or decreasing using something that's called the first derivative test. All right, a test for increasing and de decreasing functions. Basically what we're going to be doing, and you've learned in your discovery, that if the derivative is bigger than zero, so if the derivative is positive, then we'll know that the actual function is going to be increasing or rising on the interval. If the derivative is less than zero or if the derivative is negative, then we have found that f will be decreasing or falling on the interval. And if the derivative is equal to zero, then f is constant. It's not rising or falling on that interval. So let's go ahead and look at a few examples. You'll notice the following are graphs of f prime of x. What do they tell us about the actual function? So these are just graphs of the derivative. So we basically just want to look at where is the derivative bigger than zero and where is the derivative less than zero. And what we're talking about are y values. So where are the y values positive? So you'll notice right here on this interval right here, we notice that all of the y values are positive. And so basically what we know up here for these y values, my function is increasing. And down here, all of my y values are negative. So if all my y values are negative, I know that my function is going to be decreasing. Okay, I'm going to show you a little bit different way of making this. Um, we're going to actually, where the derivative equals zero, you'll notice it's at three, zero, and x equals three. We're gonna actually draw what's something that's called an f prime chart. And then what we can do is before three, you'll notice all of my y values of my derivative are positive. And after three, all the y values of the derivative are negative. And so basically what's this, what this is showing is um, my function is going to be increasing. And then my function is going to be decreasing. Okay, so if I wanted to say where is it increasing, f is increasing all the way from negative infinity till I get to three, and then f will be decreasing at three and then going till infinity. And you'll notice I did not put brackets because at three the derivative is equal to zero, so it's, de it's neither increasing or decreasing. Okay, next one, if you look at it, first of all, my, you'll notice my derivative is equal to zero at x equals zero, but for everything else, my y values other than at zero, my y values are always negative. So that basically tells me that my function is going to be decreasing. Okay, if I drew something that's called our f prime chart, my derivative chart, notice it was at zero. Before zero, all my y values are negative, and then after zero, all my y values are negative. So that basically is just telling me that my function is decreasing everywhere except at zero. So I would say f is decreasing from negative infinity till I get to zero, and then from zero to infinity. And notice I need to separate it at zero because it's not increasing or decreasing at zero. All right, the third example, if I, again, I'm going to use an f prime chart this time right away, I notice that my values of the derivative are zero at x equals negative two and x equals two. Notice I'm not paying attention to this part because that's not where my answer equals zero, my y value is not zero there. And then before that, before I get to negative two, all my y values are positive. Then between negative two and two, my y values are negative. And then after two, my y values again are positive. So if I'm looking at where is f increasing, f will be increasing. I can basically just look at my chart. It's gonna be increasing starting at negative infinity until I get to negative two. And then I also notice it's increasing from my chart starting at two going to infinity. And again, I'm not including two. Okay, then f will be decreasing between the intervals negative two to two. All right, um, basically your guidelines for finding intervals on which a function is increasing or decreasing, I actually just already did it. Um, we'll locate the critical numbers and that's just where the derivative is equal to zero or it's undefined. And then we're going to determine the sign of the derivative at one test interval, so we're going to draw an f prime chart just like I did on the previous slide. And then we'll use the theorem above that very first one that I talked about to decide where the function is increasing or decreasing. So let's just do a couple examples. We want to find the open intervals on in which the function is increasing or decreasing. So the first thing that I wanna do, since I don't have a picture of the derivative, I'm actually just going to find the derivative myself. So I'll get three x squared minus 
3x. The next thing, we would need to find where the derivative equals 0 or where it's undefined. We're going to find those critical numbers. So I'll do 3x squared minus 3x equals 0. I'm going to factor out a 3x, so I'll get x minus 1. My critical numbers will occur at 0 and 1. So now, even though we don't have a picture, that's okay, I'm going to go ahead and make an f prime chart. And I'm going to put 0 and 1 on my f prime chart. Okay, again, we don't have a picture to look at, but what we're going to think of instead, we just need to test something over to the left side of 0. So I am going to test negative 1, and I'm going to put it into the derivative. Notice this is called an f prime test, so we're going to test it in the derivative. So if I put 0 up, excuse me, if I put negative 1 up here into the derivative, I am going to get 3 plus 3, which is 6. I'm going to get a positive number. Okay, if I test something between 0 and 1, um, if I put like 0.5 or 1 half, I'm actually going to go into the factored form. I think it's easier. If I put 1 half in here, I'll get a positive number times a negative number. So my derivative will be negative. And then let's say I test 2. If I plug 2 in, again, the factored form I think is easier to work with, I'll get 6 times 1. That's a positive value. So based on this chart now, you should be able to tell me where f is increasing. And if I just look at my chart, I know since the derivative is positive, it's going to be increasing from negative infinity till I get to 0, and then from 1 until I get to infinity. And then f will be decreasing where the derivative is negative. And the derivative is negative in between 0 and 1. And notice again, I didn't use brackets because at 0 and 1, it's neither decreasing or increasing. All right, let's try one more example. Again, we want to find the derivative, so we can do something about this. This is going to be a quotient rule problem. So f prime will equal 1, g prime will equal 1, and then we'll get the derivative is equal to f prime times g, so 1 times x minus 3, minus f times g prime, all over g squared. All right, and then from here, just cleaning it up, we'll get x minus 3, minus x minus 3, all over x minus 3 squared, x's cancel, my derivative will equal negative 6 over x minus 3 squared. Okay, looking for critical numbers. The derivative will never equal 0 because negative 6 will never equal 0, but the denominator will equal 0. Again, we could square root both sides. Um, I'd get x minus 3 equals 0, so my critical number is occurring at x equals 3. So again, what I'm going to do is make an f prime chart, and I'm going to put 3 on it. And then I'm going to rewrite this derivative so I can actually see it. Okay, first of all, I need to test something on the left side of 3. I think I'm going to test 0. So if I put 0 in here, I'll get negative 6 over 9. That will be a negative number. really don't care what the number is, but I just do care that it's negative. And then I'm going to pick something to the right. I think I'll pick 5. So if I plug 5 in here, I'll end up getting negative 6 over 4 and again is a negative number. So you'll notice that since both sides are negative, since the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing at everywhere except for 3. So we could just say that f is decreasing, and it's decreasing from negative infinity till I get to 3, and then from 3 to infinity. So hopefully now you know how to use the first derivative test to tell whether a function is increasing or decreasing.